Hi, right, today's lesson is on the properties of exponents and radicals. This all starts with the properties of regular rational exponents. So basically, in general, you got the product of powers, which means when you multiply, you add. Power of a power, when you raise to a power, you multiply the exponents. And the power of a product, you just distribute. When you do a division and quotient, that's when you subtract. The key thing is if you have a negative exponent, it moves to the denominator. So that is a key thing to remember. Okay, for the first example, let's use some of these properties to rewrite this expression into a simplified form. So there are two levels to this. We have the coefficients and we have the exponents. So for the coefficients, we treat it as a normal problem, two times three, which would be six. Now, since these have the same base, which they're both x, we are allowed to add these exponents because of multiplication. So if we go 5, 6 plus negative 1 third. So 5, 6 plus negative 1 third, which in turn becomes 5, 6 minus 2, 6, which ends up becoming 3, 6. So our final answer will be 6x to the 1 half. Go ahead and try this problem. For example, to, let's use more of the properties to do one with two variables. So same as before, any of the coefficients, we just do like normal. So 3 times 4 is 12. With the x's, we're going to add those exponents. So x to the 1 half plus negative 4 fifths. And then we're going to add the ones for the y. So y to the 2 thirds plus 3. Now using a calculator or side math, we end up with 12 then x to the negative 3 tenths, y to the 11 thirds. If you notice, we have a negative exponent here, which means we have to move it to the denominator. So our final answer is 12y to the 11 thirds over x to the positive 3 tenths. When you move it from here to the bottom, it becomes positive. Go ahead and try this problem. All right, now let's use properties of exponents to rewrite radicals. So the first thing to note is this is a square root. So you can imagine a little 2 right there. We never write the 2 because it is the lowest root you can have. So for the 180, just split it apart like normal. So when you split apart square root of 180, you get 6, leave a space, and then radical 5. The reason I left a space, because if you look, the a to the fourth we're going to have to deal with. When it comes to roots, they are divisions. So this would be the same as going 4 divided by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. So that leaves us with a to the second power on the outside. So that is our answer. It's 6a squared radical 5. Now for part b, same thing. Break apart the number in any way you need to. I get a 12 and a square root of 2. Now if we notice as we go through, this a has an exponent of 1. Since 2 does not divide 1 evenly, it stays in the radical. But 4 does divide by 2 evenly and leaves us with b squared. So that is our answer. 12b squared, radical 2a. Go ahead and try this problem. Now we're going to add and subtract radical expressions. So the key thing is we're just going to simplify and then combine like terms. So we look through each of these radicals and we see if we can simplify. Radical 6 does not simplify whatsoever. So we are going to simplify radical 8. This gives us radical 6 plus radical 6 
plus 2 radical 2. Now combining like terms, we have 2 radical 6s. So we write 2 radical 6 plus 2 radical 2. And that is our answer. The only way you can combine them is if these radicals are exactly the same. With number 2, we're going to go through again and simplify. But there are coefficients, so we're going to have to take those into account. So we get 2 times 3 radical 2 minus 2 times 2 radical 2 minus 3 times 3 radical 2. Now with all these coefficients, notice I left them, so we're going to multiply. So 6 radical 2 minus 4 radical 2 minus 9 radical 2. And from here, all we have to do is deal with the coefficients. So 6 minus 4 is 2, minus 9 is negative 7 radical 2. And that is our answer. Try this problem. Now we're going to multiply binomial radical expressions. So all we have to do is distribute everything, or FOIL if you will. So we go 2 times 5 is 10, 2 times negative 3 radical 3. Now since 2 is a whole number, we're going to multiply it by the number on the outside, not the radical. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6 radical 3. Now we're going to do this one. So we go 4 radical 3 times 5, which will be 20 radical 3, because we multiply 4 and 5 because they are non-radicals. Now when it comes to a radical expression, against a radical expression. We take the numbers on the outside and we multiply those together. So 4 times negative 3 would be negative 12. Radical 3 times radical 3 is radical 9. Now we know square root of 9 is the same as 3. So we can replace this with 3. And now we're going to go ahead and clean this up. So 10, we're going to combine these. So plus 14 radical 3, and this will be negative 12 times 3, which is negative 36. And now we're going to go ahead and combine these two. So we get negative 26 plus 14 radical 3. If you notice, I wrote the number first, then the radical. That is proper form for writing any radical expression. The radical always goes last. So keep that in mind when you're looking for answers and solving and writing your final answer. Go ahead and try this problem. 